Well, welcome to Lesson 5 of Unit 4 on Arithmetic Sequences. In this lesson, we will be working on recognizing and extending arithmetic sequences. We will also be able to find the terms of an arithmetic sequence. So to get started, we need to define some new terms. And first of all is, what is a sequence? Well, a sequence is just a list of numbers that follow some kind of rule, and every number in the sequence is called a term of the sequence. So that's just a, some kind of an ordered list of numbers. An arithmetic sequence, a particular specific type of sequence, is a sequence that has a constant difference between consecutive terms, and that constant difference is called the common difference. So for example, here are some examples of arithmetic sequences. So 1, 3, 5, 7 is an arithmetic sequence. These are going up by 2, so the common difference is 2. 10, 7, 4, 1, and so on and so forth is also an arithmetic sequence because it's decreasing by 3. So let's take a look at some practice problems. We want to determine if the sequences that are given <clears throat> are arithmetic sequences. If they are, we want to find what that common difference is and then the next two terms in the sequence. Well, in this first one, we start with 11 and go to 4, so we're going down by 7. And then from 4 to negative 3, it goes down 7 again. And then from negative 3 to negative 10 is negative 7 as well. So yes, this is a arithmetic and arithmetic sequence. And we want to find the next two terms. So all we have to do to find the next two terms is to go ahead and subtract 7. So if we went down uh, 7 more units, we would get negative 10 minus 7 gives us negative 17. And then negative 17 minus 7 gives us negative 24. So the next two terms would be negative 17 and negative 24. On the next one, we start from 4 and go to 8, so that goes up by 4. And then from 8 to 16, it goes up by 8. So we can see that this is not an arithmetic sequence because it does not have a common difference between consecutive terms. So one of the things we're going to be doing is finding the terms of a sequence. And it could be any term. Sometimes we call that the nth term. So there is what's called a recursive formula, and the recursive formula is this. It says a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Now that looks pretty scary, but here's the interpretation of that formula. So a sub 1 is just the first term in the sequence. n is the term we're looking for, or the term number, and d is that common difference. It's just a number. So let's look at a specific example to try to make more sense of this. Suppose we have 5, 8, 11, 14. Okay? So this is an arithmetic sequence. Okay, if we start at 5 and go to 8, we're going up by 3. From 8 to 11, again, we're going up by 3. And from 11 to 14, we're going up by 3, right? So we already know just from doing that that our common difference D is 3 a sub 1 is the first term in the sequence. That's the 5. So a sub 1 is 5. a sub 2 just represents the second term. a sub 1 is the first term. And a sub 2 is the second term. So that would be 8. The third term is 11. And the fourth term is 14. So suppose we want to find a sub 25, the 25th term in a sequence. So this is just, we're going to plug it into this formula. n, in this case, is 25. A sub 1 is always the first term, so it's going to be the first term, which is 5, plus, we said n is 25, so 25 minus 1 will give us 24, and d is the common difference of 3. So 24 times 3 is 72, and add that to 5, we get 77. So the 25th term is 77. Here's another example. It says use the recursive formula to find the first four terms of an arithmetic sequence where the first term, a sub 1, is 5, and the common difference is negative 8. Well, I've written our recursive formula for us, so all we have to do is just use that. So the first term is 5. They told us that. 
So the second term, we're going to use the formula. The second term is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times d. Well, the common difference is negative 8, and n in this case is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, and so 5 plus a negative 8 gives us a negative 3. a sub 3 is the first term, a sub 1, plus 3 minus 1 times d. Right? We're looking for the third term, so n is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, and 5 plus a negative 16 is negative 11. So we know the first term, we know the second term, we know the third term, we only have one more to go, the first four terms. If we want the fourth term, we're going to let n equal 4. a sub 1 is always 5. 5 plus 3 times negative 8 is 5 minus 24, which gives us a negative 19. So there you have it. The first four terms are 5, negative 3, negative 11, and negative 19. So here's another one, example number 3. If our first term is negative 5 and the common difference is negative 2, find the 8th and the 20th terms of the sequence. Well, our formula says a sub n is equal to the first term, a sub 1, plus n minus 1 times d. d is negative 2, a sub 1 is negative 5. If we want to find a sub 8, all we do is put in 8 for the letter n, and 8 minus 1 is 7. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, and when we add those together, we get negative 19. If we're looking for a sub 20, again, the same formula, a sub 1, 20 minus 1 is 19, and 19 times negative 2 is negative 38. Add that to negative 5, and we get negative 43. So here are a couple more. Uh, find the twelfth term of the sequence. So the first thing we need to do is to find that common difference. So if we go from 3 to 10, we're going up by 7. From 10 to 17 is also up by 7. So we know our common difference d is 7. And if we're looking for the first term is 3. So the twelfth term, a sub 12, is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 is 11, so it would be 12 minus 1, times d. 11 times 7 is 77, and add 3 to that, and we get 80. So a sub 12 would be 80. Here's another one. We want to find the 45th term of the sequence. This one's a little more challenging, but not a lot. From 3 to 3 and 1 fourth, we added 1 fourth. From 3 and a fourth to 3 and a half, again, we went up by 1 fourth. And from 3 and a half to 3 and 3 fourths, again, is up by 1 fourth. So our common difference for that example is 1 fourth. The first term a sub 1 is 3. So a sub 45 will equal 3 plus 45 minus 1 is 44 times our common difference of 1 fourth. Well, 44 times a fourth, if we put this number over 1, we can cancel the 4 and the 44. This would be a 1 and this would be an 11. So we get 3 plus 11 times 1, which is 11. And the answer gives us 14. Number four says the first table seats 10 guests, and each additional table seats 8 guests. And we want to write a rule to model this situation. Well, here's our recursive formula. a sub 1 is the first table, and that seats 10 guests. And then our common difference is going to be adding 8 every time, right? So d is the common difference. 10 seats to start with. So if we use this rule, how many guests can be seated at 15 tables? Well, we're going to start with 10 plus 15 minus 1 is 14. Um, and then I think I have a mistake in here. Use the rule to find out how many guests can be seated with 15 tables. And this is looking at a sub 25, so I think there's a typo here. Let's go ahead and change this right here to, to be 25. Sorry about that. There's a typo there. So if we have 25 tables, we have 10 plus 25 minus 1, which is 24, and 24 times 8 is 192. Add 10 to that, and we get 202 people at 25 tables. So that is how we work with arithmetic sequences, and that will be the end of this lesson. We will see you in class.